Miss South Wales bodies. Hey guys, it's Jackie M from Masters of Malaysian Cuisine for another in our series of broadcasts around the theme of Chinese New Year recipes. So our series is called Gong Si Gong Si. And this is done in partnership with our partner Facebook group, Masa Apa Tak Jadi Hari Ini, Apa Kabar Semua, Selamat Datang. Nama saya ialah Jackie M dan hari ini kita akan buat satu resipi untuk uh, Tau Maru Cina. Saya akan buat uh, Yi Sang and um, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to make this. Joining me, who is going to be hosting me, is the co-founder of Masters of Malaysian Cuisine, Paul Gray over in South Africa. You might have seen him cook at some point. Guys, um, say hello and let us know where you're watching from. I'm just going to play a quick clip from Tourism Malaysia and we'll hop back on in 30 seconds. Hey guys, Jackie, I'm back again. It's my turn to cook. And like I said, welcome to Paul Gray, who's going to be hosting me. Um, guys, uh, make sure you say hello. Let us know where you're watching from. I'm going to be making, I actually, for those of you who don't know me, I'm, you know, I'm based in Australia. I was born in Malaysia. And back in the day, I used to have a Malaysian restaurant here in Sydney. And this was something that I used to sell in my restaurant, uh, Yi Sang, which is a raw fish salmon, a raw fish salad, and I used to use salmon for it. And I used to spend a lot of time making it from scratch and sell it both at the restaurant and for people to take away. And mine was the only restaurant, only Malaysian restaurant in Sydney back in the day that used to make Yi Sang. So it attracted a lot of people, but it was a lot of work. So what I'm going to do today, because we've only got a one hour period here, I'm going to show you a, uh, you know, this is my own thinking. I haven't actually properly tried this out. This is my thinking of how you can make your own yi sang at home without having to go to the shops to buy one of those uh, yi sang kits that are so popular nowadays. And you know what? My The rest of my family actually buys these yi sang kits and they still have to add stuff to it. But these kits that contain the sauce and contain some of the crispy stuff are not cheap in themselves. So one of these kits will cost like nearly $20 Australian nowadays. I'm going to show you how you can essentially make your own yi sang kit, right? Um, but like I said, I'm going to be taking some liberties. So some of you might get annoyed. The purists might get annoyed. But I've got to remind you, for those of you who are purists about this, I do know how to make it from scratch. And I used to do it and sell it, okay? But this is for those who don't have the time and who don't want to spend money on one of these yi sang kits. Um, but yeah, again, say hello. Hey, hi, uh, hi from Singapore. Good to see you. And yeah, everyone, let us know where you're watching from so that we can acknowledge you on screen. Um, Paul, how are you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, so I'm good. Good morning from South Africa. Um, <laughs> evening I by you guys almost. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, guys, so what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to make this uh, my my own yi sang recipe actually contains nearly 20 components right and 20 components uh, by 20 components i don't mean 20 ingredients i mean 20 different little bits and pieces so there's a lot of work to pull them together this way that i'm showing you is going to cut it down by more than half all right so like i said there are going to be some liberties i'm going to take and some of you may not agree with me but for those of you who are a little bit more relaxed about the whole thing i hope you get something out of it um, and yeah, like I said, hey, Hamima, how you doing? Good to see you. So what we're going to do, we're going to make um, about eight components, okay? Like I said, I don't mean eight ingredients, but it's not too far from it. So we're going to make the sauce first, right? So I've got this pot here. And for the sauce, and people were saying like oh, how they find making the Yisan sauce a little bit complicated, a little bit confusing. They don't really know what goes into it. This is my hack for the sauce, and this is going to be the first controversial point. Okay, first of all, I'm just going to add a little bit of water here, and <clears throat> my sauce is going to be a, a combination of apricot jam, 
or marmalade if you've got that. Okay. So um, ironically, having said um, all I said about simplifying, and I'm going to have trouble opening this <laughs> because there's a brand new jar. Um, the salt in this simplified recipe is actually a little bit more, um, has more stuff happening in it, okay? And the reason for it is that it then saves you having to add other stuff to it. Okay, so I'm just heating this up with a little bit of water and I'm gonna add some apricot jam in here. Okay. And the great thing though about the sauce is that you can keep it. You can keep it, um, you know, uh, store it in a jar and it will keep indefinitely. Uh, we're going to put some sesame oil in here. Always enjoy sesame oil. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're not cheap though. That's the other thing. Like, uh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, I know like Malaysians, Asians, they know sesame oil. But when I came to Australia and started teaching people how to cook, they were asking me like whether it's like, roasted sesame oil or raw sesame oil. I was thinking that's such an odd question. I've never thought about it. <laughs> towards Asians, that oh, sesame oil is sesame oil, right? The other thing that's going into it is our plum sauce, okay? So I would hope that all of you should be able to find plum sauce at your local supermarket. Paul, you're based in South Africa where Malaysian ingredients or Asian ingredients in general are a little bit of a challenge. Can you get plum sauce easily? <clears throat> yeah, that is a definite no-no. Um, Are you serious? You know what? You can get lucky <laughs> in that a couple chains do keep um, it. So that Woolworths, if you ever see me watch and you see the like fancy bag um, grocery store, they okay. will. They have like a little bottle, but it's ridiculously pricey for the size because, you know, you can't get it there. So you got to go to Chinatown to get it. And usually when I do, I get like the huge bottles worth. <laughs> Okay, okay, sure. Well, at least you still have like Chinatown to revert to. Um, now, yeah. you would also, I would also actually put some hoisin sauce if I've, got, if I've got that on hand. That's not compulsory, okay? So you want like about a um, plum sauce and hoisin sauce in equal measure, some apricot jam and some um, sesame oil. And I'm going to be really controversial. I'm going to add some crunchy peanut butter to this, okay? So everybody's going to scream. Uh, at me for watching at home, but trust me, it works, okay? So crunchy peanut butter, and the reason for this is, like I said, the sauce you can uh, you can save and keep in your pantry or keep in your fridge for, for a long time, okay? But remember, if you are familiar with Yi Sang, we'll talk a little bit more about the history of Yi Sang and, 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 and the meaning of it and all that sort of stuff in a bit. Um, mm. If you if you've had yi sang, typically in Malaysia or in those kits, you'll actually have some crushed peanuts in it. Okay, so I'm saving you the trouble of having to roast your own peanuts and and crushing it. Okay, so we're adding a little bit of crunchy peanut butter in here, and I'm going to simmer this till it all dissolves. And if needs be, you can adjust the flavor. So uh, think... so far, you can think. Yeah, sorry, Paul. No, I was going to say I think that actually could be a good hack because if you think about it like crunchy peanut butter. I don't know what they do in the factory. I don't want to think about it, but they keep the <laughs> like peanuts crunchy in the, the peanut butter. So, you know, yeah, by adding it that, it keeps that crunchiness to it. Plus That's a little right. bit of like that that, that that's, yeah. that's right. Okay. So we're going to put some uh, lime juice in here. Um, obviously you can use lemon juice. I actually usually use lemon juice. So happens here in my neck of the woods this week, uh, limes happen to be cheaper than lemons for a change. So I decided to use limes instead. Any, so anything that's sour will work with this, okay? So let's add some okay. lime juice in here. What kind of backwards economy is it that limes are cheaper than lemons? It would never happen in South Africa. <laughs> it doesn't usually happen in Australia, so I was really surprised as well. Okay, so let's just try this a little bit. Okay, so essentially what you want to produce is something that's fairly strong uh, flavored as in like sweet and sour, okay? Now, I know there are people out there when they simplify their yi sang sauce, all they use is honey, okay? So you can use honey too. So sometimes I use honey in lieu of apricot, apricot jam or sometimes they just use straight plum sauce, right? And you can do that too. This one to me just kind of like splits the difference between having it uh, too basic in my opinion, or having it a little bit too complicated, okay? So this is what we want to do. Throw in the lemon, uh, lemon or lime juice. Have the plum sauce. 
I'm, I'm loving that. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Debbie. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, I, I actually have some, like, um, how would you say it? Some fairly traditional Chinese outfits, but I don't necessarily want to be cooking in them because I don't want to ruin them, you know? So I thought this is kind of like, um, it's my compromise. It's red, but it's a, it's a cheap old shirt that I've worn for years and years. For those of you who don't know, I've got a separate YouTube channel, just youtube.com slash Jackie M. If you go back 10 years to my old videos, you might find me wearing the same clothes from 10 years ago. It's actually quite good. <laughs> what do you mean you might find? You will find. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, it's like I put this on because of Chinese New Year, but now that I see it on camera, it looks like peach. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's red enough. And for those of you, like I said, you know, with Chinese New Year, I get a little bit um, intrigued nowadays. I grew up in Malaysia. I came to Australia when I was 17. But back in my day, I'm sort of start to sound really old now. Back in my day, Chinese New Year dinners meant like really traditional Chinese New Year dishes. Okay, let's taste this. Okay, it's pretty much good to go. So this has come to a boil, right? And you can actually just store it in a jar once it cools down and just keep it will keep really, really well. Um, nothing in here that really will go off, okay? So let's pull this aside. And now... Um, we've got the salmon on standby, which we're going to cut up in a bit. And now, this may be a little bit hard to come by. This is pomelo. And here in Australia, our pomelos, I have to admit, are terrible. Look at how thick the skin is, okay? I was going to say, okay? look at that. It's like <laughs> thicker than the like, flesh. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Malaysian pomelos are beautiful. But obviously, if you can't get pomelo, you can use grapefruit, okay? So don't stress out about this. This is a nice to have not necessarily must have. So with uh, your typical yi sang, right, uh, a number of things that I, I've noticed that people, um, you know, sometimes when they make it at home, that they kind of like, uh, what I want to say is that there is like, insofar as Chinese New Year recipes, okay, they're, uh, they're Chinese New Year recipes because they symbolize stuff. So with a yi sang, if you want to attempt it at home, you want lots of color. You want all the Chinese like festive colors and like red represents like China to the Chinese. They represent prosperity. OK, so you want like a colorful salad. You want red, you want green, which signifies like, you know, uh, new life and all that. Right. And you want gold again, like all, all the prosperous colors. So think about that when you're assembling your own yi sang uh, platter, okay? So don't stress out about not being able to get a whole of pomelo. You can substitute it with other stuff. Um, but think of the color combination. You want the carrot because it's got the, 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 the golden, like, uh, uh, you know, colorful hue. And then also the other thing I want to mention as well is you want to shred all your, all your ingredients like thinly, okay? You don't want to cut them into like chunks. Um, I see some people cut them into chunks and yeah, that, 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 then that kind of like makes it a little bit weird to toss. So with uh, yi sang in, 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 in traditional uh, Malaysian um, style serving, you actually toss them with your chopsticks high in the air. I'll show you at the end of this, right? So the higher you toss, the, the, the more prosperous, the more luck you're supposed to bring in, okay? I think you kind of like capture the luck. Obviously, you know, this is all like tradition and fun and that sort of stuff. It doesn't necessarily mean that we actually literally believe that it will bring us good luck. But, you know, when, you know, well, when you're doing this sort of stuff, you might as well get the spirit of it and actually do it properly. That's how I kind of feel, right? But, uh, yeah, so we've got the pomelo. So this is kind of a little bit finicky because you want to actually remove the skin and just, um, just pull out the pulp, okay? So now that – so this is what we end up with, okay? And somebody is – commenting as me that will be poor <laughs> <That is me. laughs> and so big news coming soon oh yeah guys if you think that our momc chefs have been absent on camera that's because momc lives momc mondays with some of you who've been following momc since we started momc mondays is going to restart in march and it's going to be momc tv okay so momc is growing up we're going to create our our online TV show and it's going to be all recorded and beautifully edited and it's going to have like more like more stuff more cooking more 
interviews, more behind the scenes looks and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so make sure you stay tuned for MOMC TV that's going to be launching in a few weeks. But uh, in the meantime, keep, yeah, keep sorry, an, I was gonna say keep an eye on the next few days because we're gonna have a trailer dropping as well. Um, ah, yeah, and I, I, yeah, even yeah. though I'm the one creating it, I, I must say so. It's quite good myself. Even my dad thought so. <laughs> you know why? Because I spent like how many hours did I spend with you last night, Paul? Spent like four hours <laughs> at oh, least. <laughs> yeah. See, it's all my. You know, it's all thanks hashtag, to my input. <laughs> hashtag teamwork <laughs> makes the dream work. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So okay, right now I've got some pomelo. Okay. And like I said, you can use grapefruit. You can probably I find use that grapefruit. Like, I find that grapefruit would be just a bit too sour or bitter, in my opinion. You know, uh, it might be. I've never actually been a fan of grapefruit myself. Okay. Um, or you can use like mandarins. Okay. Uh, mandarins is very Chinese New Year's. Very and orange. uh, yeah, oranges. Okay. But uh, the ma mandarins in particular, they represent, they symbolize because of. Uh, the, the 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 what do you call it? Um, they they sound like a word in Chinese for gold. Okay, so it's a good it's a good ingredient to use in your Chinese New Year cooking. Okay, now I want to talk about these um, mandolins. Okay, obviously I think a lot of people have normal mandolins. These are like kind of like Asian style mandolins. I, I say Asian style because here in Australia, you have to go to like the Asian parts of Sydney to find these and they proliferate like uh, Asian shops here, okay? But they come in a couple of different sizes. This is the fine one and this is the thicker one, okay? So if you're making this, okay, if you're grading fresh ingredients for Yi Sang, you want the fine one, okay? Everything you want them to be um, not short and chunky and thick, you want them to be long and thin, okay? So, and this here is what we call radish growing up. Nowadays, uh, the, the Japanese term for it is daikon seems to be a little bit more commonly popular. popular, okay? So you want to shred this in long strips, okay? And again, if you don't have daikon, you can use like cucumber, I guess, okay? So don't stress out too much about the fresh ingredients, but you do want the combination of fresh ingredients and also like prepared ingredients, okay? And carrots, everyone should be able to get a whole of carrots. How would you feel about normal radishes? Not normal. really the right flavor profile. You know, the little They're round red, red ones. Small, those little stumpy ones. Yeah, because yeah, it doesn't have that nice length and you, know, yeah, you can't make like sort of a spaghetti out of them. Yeah, like noodles, okay? Mm. Hey, Roger, Ro, uh, Ro, Ro oh, Chef, you're Chef Yen. <laughs> Good to see you. Okay, hey, Yen, so what I'm, doing well. now, <laughs> all I'm going to do now is actually to I'm going to heat up some oil, okay? Because we're going to actually do some frying, okay? And just got this pot going and heat up the oil with your soya bean oil. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Everybody is always asking, oh, what kind of oil do you use? I use whatever is cheapest that I can buy at the, at the store, okay? So this is labeled as vegetable oil, but if you read the fine print, it's actually Malaysian soybean oil. I have to mention Malaysia, okay? Right. Muffy's so, going to love you for that. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got, again, we've got some radish, okay, or daikon, some carrot, and some pomelo so far. Okay, that looks nice. And remember, make the sauce, and the sauce you can make using a combination of apricot jam or marmalade plus hoisin sauce plus plum sauce plus sesame oil and plus a bit of crunchy peanut butter. That's my hack for it. Okay, <laughs> now I've got two more to, hacks. Sorry, I want to ask two things quickly. Is the plum sauce together with the hoisin, you don't think is a bit sweet? Like I'm imagining in my head that it might be a little it's too sweet. It's meant to be sweet. That's why. That's how it can counter. Like that's why the lime All juice the is in there. Oh yeah, I, I stuck some lime okay. juice in there. And guys, remember, like I said, this is the only part of this hack that actually is has got more ingredients going into it than my normal um raw fish salad sauce okay and the reason for it is you can cook it all together store it in jars next time you want some raw fish salad you don't think oh i need to crush some peanuts or i need to grab some of this mm -hmm. i need to grab some of that and throw it together you've got a jar of 
raw fish salad sauce in your fridge and then maybe you can sell it to your friends too. See, so start a little cottage industry, okay? <laughs> so, yi sang sauce. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do, uh, I'm just heating some oil here. Now, what I used to do back in my restaurant when I sold this, I would actually make these uh, uh, flour crisps, okay, that go into it because part of the charm of yi sang is that it's got this crispy fried texture, like kind of like, folded into all the fresh ingredients right so i used to make the pastry from scratch and you make that using plain flour using some uh, fermented bean curds and all that you roll it into thin sheets and you cut them up and then you fry them up they puff out a little bit because there's a bit of baking powder in them but the hack is to use one ton skin wrappers okay so what i'm going to do I would hope everyone can buy one ton skin wrappers or dumpling yep. wrappers. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'll show you how to make your own one ton skin. But any kind what of like uh, pastry, right? So we're going to do some of this here. So take a few out. And remember, um, now you want to let me just move this out of the way. You want to cut this into strips, okay? So cut it into thin strips. Okay, the oil is getting hot already. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. I definitely want to try that in a salad. I think it's going to add a nice texture. Yeah, it will. It will. Okay. Mm. So I'll cut them into like these chunks here. And what you want to do is just throw it into some oil. Okay. And fry it up. I was going to say that um, just thinking back about the sesame oil thing is you're definitely right that, uh, you know, non sort of Asian people don't know what's going on there. Because like I went to the shops the other day and I saw sesame oil that was really cheap and I was like, oh, it's really cheap. Like I need to try this. I tried it and it was the raw one. And I was just like, oh, this is I'm a letdown. See, the raw, the raw type of sesame oil I find is what the health food people go for um and they look for them in health food stores so i'm surprised mm. that it's cheap i would have thought that it would be actually more expensive because it caters to people who are um who are into into health food okay so you fry these <laughs> and by the way when you fry anything okay when you know that it's ready is like when you throw first throw it into the oil it bubbles up very vigorously when the bubbling starts to dissipate that's when you know that the moisture has been pulled out from it. Don't wait till it's completely flat in the oil because you will have fried it too long. But when it starts to dissipate dissipate quite a bit, uh, you take it out, it will continue to crisp up out of the oil. And then you're going to wait till it cools down before, before you use it, okay? Because when it cools down is when it will crisp up beautifully, okay? So yeah, like I said, Chinese New Year recipes, they all symbolize something. Um, you want, like I said, you know, the reds, the, the, the greens, the golds. And how do you produce the green in this recipe? Okay, what I used to do for my restaurant was I would get taro. Okay, everyone knows taro, uh, ubi kayu, that you then um, shred. And you would want to shred it, anything that needs cooking, um, further, you want to shred it using the 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 bigger mandolin, okay, the ones with the bigger holes, okay, because when you cook it, it's going to shrink some more. So what I would do is get taro and I would shred it, and then I would split it into two portions. One portion I would actually uh, put red dye through it, okay. Again, red prosperity, and the other portion I would put green dye in through it, okay. And what do I use for green dye? Red dye you can find out uh, find pretty easy in Asian grocery stores because we use red for like things like char siu, like uh, the, the the barbecue pork stuff. But green, I used to use pandan concentrate. Okay, everybody, if you're Malaysian, you will know pandan concentrate that you use in onde onde in kaya and all that. I don't actually use them in kaya and onde because I use fresh kaya and onde. Hey, Annie, how you doing? Um, 
for those of you who are part of my coaching community of online students, hey from Cape Town, hey Nasreen, how you doing? For those of you who are from my online coaching community, um, you will have seen me do the long form way to make yi sang, okay? Just last weekend, but today I'm showing you the shortcut way of doing it. So we've got the oil. I forgot, uh, the other thing you want to go into this is ginger, right? Now, there are two options. Uh, they're both shortcuts. One is to buy a jar of pickled ginger from an Asian grocery store. This costs like a dollar or something like that. So this is the cheap option and it works perfectly fine. Okay, so straight out of the jar. It's already shredded for you, so you don't have to shred it, right? Or the other option is you get sushi, sushi. ginger. Yeah, yeah. This, <laughs> this costs a dollar, this costs five dollars, right? So um, I'll let you decide which one to go with, but sushi Whichever ginger. Whichever you can get your hands on. <laughs> exactly, sushi ginger might be easier to get. Maybe you go, you know, next every time you go buy sushi, you know how to give you a little sachet of ginger? Save those Just and use them for you. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So sushi ginger looks like this. Okay, and then you just want to, because they're in slices, they're not shredded. You do have to cut them out, okay? So use some of that and cut it out. And sushi ginger is actually sweet, um, as anyone who tries it would know. Um, my thing about sushi ginger, it, it, it works fine, but once you cut it up, it's not in strips. Uh, okay, but that's the only uh, thing I would say about sushi ginger. Um, like I said, pickled ginger, Asian grocery stores, jar of this costs, I think, from memory, like a dollar. Okay, and it's already it's already shredded. It's not sweet. Okay, so, but remember, your sauce is sweet. It's so your sauce sweet. will help to actually counteract some of this. Um, okay, so... So far, you're still with me. We've got the, well, we have five, five ingredients yeah, so far. One, two, three, four, five ingredients so far, plus the sauce is six, <laughs> right? And we're going to hack another. Okay, so we've got the wonton wrappers for crispiness. We want more crispiness and we want more color. How do you do that? So what we're going to do, you have two options, okay? This is, again, my hack. Remember how I said Hey, Suan, how you doing? Remember how I was saying in my restaurant, I used to use taro, okay? Taro, I would marinate them in different colors, um, Chinese New Year colors, and then fry them up into crispy taro strips. We want to save you the effort because taro can be a little bit hard to get for some people. And, you know, truth be told, it's a pain trying to, like, shred that much taro because it's starchy, it's sticky, and then, um, yeah, it's just a fair bit of work, okay? The... Uh, what you can use, okay, two hacks. This, everyone knows this. This is a uh, vermicelli. Paul, are you familiar with vermicelli? Yep, and that brand okay. exactly. I've got it in the cupboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think this brand's got the market cornered around the world, okay? Basically. So, dry vermicelli, put it in here. Okay, let me turn on the oil. I must say, frying it, Frying it creates such an interesting texture. Like I've only done yeah. it a couple times, but I really enjoy it. Right, right. Okay, so um, Paul knows what's coming, but I'm going to <laughs> like make it green. Okay, so remember my pandan concentrate. Let's pour some green in here through these dried vermicelli sticks and toss it through. Like I said, this isn't going to please everybody, but hopefully enough of you will want to give it a shot next time you think you're going to spend like $19 or $20 for a box of these, um, you know, prepared. Okay. Think about doing this instead. Okay. So I'll toss this through. Look. That's it's now pretty green. green. It is pretty green. Or <laughs> you can use, these are sold as like, egg noodles okay this is what we in malaysia use for wonton noodles here in australia and the reason I, I you know i have to admit this is more easily available for people like paul gray in south africa <laughs> um, but if you can get a hold of this this is just as good okay this is like the flowery if you go to your asian grocery store and look for these flowery wonton noodles okay uh that you can deep fry again 
coat it with green or if you have red coat it with red right so just pour it over and toss it through you can see it are there any other substitutions in case you can't get um, pandan concentrate that you can think of? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone got any suggestions? Um, you you have green food coloring everywhere, right? Am I right, Paul? You should. I mean, yeah. go to the baking yeah. section and look. I'm I'm only using pandan because I'm too cheap to actually separately buy green food coloring. Um, back mm -hmm. in my restaurant days, I used pandan quite a lot, but I yeah. But doesn't but the pandan add some? Green? flavor to it as well or is it not strong enough to add any flavor yeah it's not strong enough to add anything and it's really not meant to add any flavor to it okay so let's throw it in and fry it up okay so these are the egg noodles so one ton noodles And by the way, guys, if you want this recipe, you need to sign up malaysianchefs.com slash join today. And I will have the recipe available for you to download. I will email you the recipe, okay? Along with all the other Gongsi Gongsi recipes, we will email it to everyone uh, who signs up, right? Even so make sure you sign up to get it. Okay, so that's our green noodles, now green noodles. It doesn't and grab the green as much as the rice, uh, the vermicelli does. The rice noodles, yeah. Rice yeah. noodles, by their nature, actually um, uh, are, are porous. So they absorb um, they absorb Stuff noodles. Uh, they absorb the colors yeah. and everything else really well. What cochineal? Annie says green cochineal. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'll have that a Google. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds too Western food to me. Uh, I'm very Malaysian. I'm unabashedly fully Malaysian in my cooking, um, yeah, in my cooking techniques, knowledge, everything, okay? When it comes to other cuisines, That's I do a blank all the time. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the green noodles. Here you go. So and of course, I said you've got red even better, okay? Yeah. Yeah, so what's just cochineal? Google, cochineal is a parasite in South America that like oh, nice. eats up the leaves and stuff, but it's good for the diet. Okay, cool. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's okay, interesting. Okay, so we've got two different, good. like, you know, you could actually even put more green through this, right? Mm. And then you've got the, the one ton crisps. So, how many ingredients are we up to, Paul? We're up to. Seven, eight. Okay. So we have to do this one or two because then we're okay. on nine. Yeah, it's up to you. <laughs> so we've got the fish now. So we're going to slice up the That's fish. Okay. If you want to make it easier to slice up the fish, just freeze it for half an hour. Right. And look, again, the other thing I want to mention, a lot of people, they just use sashimi. They use like pre-cut sashimi and that's fine. All right. But in Malaysia, uh, if you thick. have, they're cut really, really thin. Okay. I was going to say, so the thing about sashimi is I feel like it's a little thick, you know, especially yeah. for this dish. Yeah. You know, truth be told, I love my salmon sashimi, so I'm not going to complain about that. But, yeah, no. uh, typically. <laughs> <laughs> um, to me, the more is better. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, okay, so we've got all this. Now, if you have toasted sesame, green coloring used for cake so there you go now if you have toasted sesame uh seeds then use that as well but again because this is a quick and easy and simplified version i'm going to spare you having to toast uh, sesame seeds all right what i do is i buy sesame seeds in bags of like one kilo and i toast a whole lot and then i keep it away in an airtight jar and then every time I, anything calls for sesame seeds, I just sprinkle it. So if you've got that, do it. If you don't, leave it out, okay, for this recipe. Let's move this out of the way. All right, so let's assemble it. Okay, so again, the carrot for the red, right? The radish or daikon, the ginger, and the pomelo or grapefruit 
Okay, so you've got like a few different colors here, but these are all soft textures. Then you want the crispy bits, okay? So you've got the crispy noodles. You can put two different types. Okay, I'm gonna pretend the other one is red, okay? Because we don't have a lot of red here. That's because I don't have any red dye on hand. Okay. But Just you know what? with the blood of your enemies. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you've got all this. You got the salmon, okay? Okay. And you're just gonna pour the sauce over it. I was gonna say we actually get pumple mousse as well in South Africa, which is like pomelo, just like twice the size. And I think that All would right. actually work nicely for this because you can shred it into longer strips. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. What's it called again? Pumple mousse. Okay. I don't know to spell it, but... Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So remember the sauce. It's got crunchy peanut butter in it. And look, if you've got crushed peanuts, leave out the crunchy peanut butter and just pour crushed peanuts over this. But again, remember, this is for those who want to make the sauce in bulk and store it away. And who also don't necessarily have peanut awesome. butter on hand. Oh, I have crushed peanuts on hand. Hey, Renee, how you doing? Yisang, greetings from Dubai. Yay. All right. So, very, very quick and easy. How long did it take me? Okay. Like 30, just over 30 half minutes. an hour. Yeah. Usually we spoke for like make, five minutes at the start. To be fair, when I make it for my restaurant, I make it for much, much in my, much larger quantities. But anytime I needed to make Yisang for Chinese New Year for my restaurant, it would set me like – it will set me back three hours easy okay so this in just under half an hour over half an hour we've got all this and like i said paul uh paul you you've shown you some video clips the way you mm -hmm. serve your song is you would toss it okay so, yeah so That's it's the a coolest community. part of it yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you toss all of it together and toss it high okay <laughs> to produce the thing is I'm not totally inexperienced because I did watch your masterclass in your academy on Sunday, Saturday. That's so, right. That's right. Yeah. That's the one thing I know about it. <laughs> Isn't this but much, much easier? Yeah. But I'm ex really excited <laughs> to make this. Yeah. There you go. And also the ingredients, like I said, it's a, it's a good get-together dish. That's exactly right. right. So mm. the thing about this is that you know all the ingredients are pretty easy for you to get a hold of regardless of whether you're in hopefully hopefully like you know in most parts of even europe you should be able to find these ingredients right um but there you go look at how colorful this is okay hey how are you <laughs> hi from turkey just, just to see you <laughs> toss it high <laughs> yeah toss it high okay so, be reckless <laughs> Wish we could get our toss sticks into. I, I agree with Renee. <laughs> there you go. So pretty easy. If you want this recipe, like I said, don't forget we are emailing. We're now emailing all our members all the recipes, and mm -hmm. I'm just going. I'm just slowly going through all our backlog of recipes right now, and you will get it by email, okay? And also, you will be able to access them via our membership site which we will give you instructions on how to create an account for and access and all that as well for free. So all this content is for free. Um, anyone has any questions, any kind of like outrage about like the liberties I've taken with this or anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, think, I personally think you didn't follow enough tradition in this dish, not that I know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I said, I could have made it so incredibly simple. I just said use honey as the sauce or use plum sauce for the sauce. Oh, thanks, Sheila. You're welcome. Um, but I wanted to split the difference because in all honesty, because I used to own a restaurant, to me, flavor is really paramount. Okay. So when I was running my restaurant and a lot of the back, a lot of the bottleneck was me, I did use a lot of shortcuts. But ultimately, if you take too many shortcuts and your food turns out like a fully compromised thing, people aren't going to pay money to eat it. Okay. So every time you see me prepare a recipe, whether it's the traditional way or is the shortcut way, uh, remember that at the back of my mind, I'm always thinking 
would people pay money to eat this? Okay, so that's the uh, that's that to me is the the, the key question. So there Actually, you go. Yeah. I have I have one question, and it might require a long answer. But tell us a bit about your sort of history um, in terms of Chinese New Year as a kid, as growing up. I'd love to know, like, how you guys yeah, celebrated sure, sure. it and stuff. Okay. First of all, Nazreen is asking, what is Yisang? <laughs> Yisang literally means raw fish. Um, and apparently, apparently in China somewhere it's eaten, but not for Chinese New Year. The whole tradition of eating Yisang at Chinese New Year was apparently created by someone in my hometown of Surumban in Malaysia. And the, like I said, Chinese New Year dishes are very like symbolic. It's just like Easter, you know, Easter eggs, eggs represent like new life and rebirth and all that sort of stuff. Same with Chinese New Year recipes, everything means something, okay? So the way that used is, I guess they have basically uh, taken a hold of a, a known recipe and use it for Chinese New Year by adding all these components like the colorful um, Chinese New Year, you eat fish, fish it because fish is generally quite expensive, quite like, um, uh, you know, a luxury kind of ingredient. It's seen as like a sign of abundance of like uh, wealth and all that, right? And also like the colors and all that mix into it. Um, you know, represent Chinese New Year because of all the different colors to do with prosperity, to do with good luck, to do with like new life and all that. Yes, I am from Surumban. So I'm, I'm the original Surumban girl. If you go to surumbangirl.com, that's me, my blog. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, as far as my experience of Chinese New Year, and like I said, you know, it's quite interesting having lived in Australia for 37 years. Um, come Chinese New Year, people post photos of what they ate. And to me, it's really strange when they eat like uh, chak kui tiao and, and, and nasi lemak and all that. OK, because growing up as a Chinese in Malaysia, the kind of stuff that we ate were, again, like I said, very symbolic stuff, a lot of seafood. Uh, seafood again representing like you know abundance and wealth and all that and it's interesting Masna in her last session you can go back and watch all our replays over at you on our YouTube channel by the way guys youtube.com slash masters of Malaysian cuisine has um, our past replays now Masna made a steamed whole fish and that's also a very traditional Chinese New Year dish right again fish representing like um you know luxury and all that but the whole fish because to the chinese um it represents like you know uh, having good luck from start to finish you got a head to the tail the start to the finish of the entire year you will have good luck right um you're talking about uh dishes like um uh, you know, people, it's quite funny, uh, Chef Ismail, Chef Dato Ismail, during his broadcast a couple of weeks ago, he was talking about how he visited uh, his Chinese friend for Chinese New Year when he was a kid, and they gave him like uh, mandarins. Mandarin, again, like I said, in Cantonese, the word for mandarin is gum, and gum is, uh, it sounds like the same word for gold, right? So that's why you see all the Chinese, they exchange mandarins for Chinese New Year. So they all represent something. Um, uh, yeah, the, the whole fish, yeah. So all these things, like a lot of seafood, a lot of Chinese-like flavors, right? Um, and I was pesta adapt, oh, oh, barbate. Oh, I, I, I've never heard of that. Lucky you. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very jealous. All these um, to do with tradition and all that in Malaysia, I think it's fantastic. Speaking of which, guys, uh, we are very, very, ex um, you know that from Suramban, I'm Suramban. Oh, yeah, 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 yes. Now staying in Frankfurt. Oh, good talk, we get. <laughs> now, um, guys, speaking of um, adat and all that sort of stuff, Masters of Malaysian Cuisine, we are extremely, extremely excited to be collaborating with the Malaysian Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industries in March, okay? End of March. Make sure you guys stay tuned. We're going to do an entire, like, a four-day stretch of live demos with our original masters of Malaysian cuisine chefs, uh, Chef Rene, Chef Joe, Papa Joe, Chef uh, Debbie Teo, who's our new MOMC chef, chef and Bob, uh, chef, chef Bob, Zaleha Open from UK, and Chef Dave. All of us are going to be cooking um, Malaysian heritage dishes 
to showcase Malaysian food and Malaysian ingredients um, for our global audience. So we're very, very excited to be collaborating with the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industries for that. Make sure you stay tuned. There's going to be a special e-magazine that's going to come out. There's going to be on-site events as well. So if you're based in Sydney, or you're based in Dubai, or you're based in Kuala Lumpur, especially, you have a chance to meet our chefs live in um, specific locations, and you'll have a chance to actually take away some products, some Malaysian products with you, okay? So we're so incredibly excited for this, um, but make sure you stay tuned for further announcements that's coming up in March, and also that's coming out late March, and early March, remember, MOMC TV launches with our MOMC chefs. But in the meantime, we are running Gongsi Gongsi to the end of February with our uh, combination of MOMC chefs and MOMC at heart chefs, people like Lisa Yeo, people like, um, oh, you're so welcome, uh, <laughs> Abdul, with uh, Chef Dato Ismail, with uh, people like Victoria, who's coming up soon with us, uh, people like Masna, all these amazing chefs, uh, Liam Ghani, all these amazing chefs from all around the world who are part of our MOMC at Heart family. And if you are interested in being a part of our MOMC at Heart family, send me a message, okay? I'll tell you what you need to do. Uh, because we'd love to continue to grow our base, uh, bring on the more family. guest chefs working for us. So if you, if you think you've got what it takes to cook live on air, get in touch with me, okay, guys? Um, any other questions? No, that's it. Um, okay. So again, yeah, like I said, it. that's my quick and easy recipe for Yisang that people should be able to pay money to eat, okay? So give it a shot next time you want to save 19 bucks on a pack of these Yisang kits, okay? Uh, you're so welcome, Jamie. Uh, I'll try this recipe, prepare my own yeast. Oh, you're so welcome. Awesome. Let me know how it turns out. If you guys attempt any of our recipes, tag us on social media, and we're going to actually start announcing like uh, the prizes for people that we think um, deserve a special mention, okay? You're so welcome, Sue Ann. And mm -hmm. Sue Ann, guys, from Coming up My Kitchen Rules Australia, Sue uh -huh. Ann Ui is going to be uh, one of our new MOMC at Heart Chefs who's going to be cooking live for us for uh Gongsi Gongsi coming up in the next few weeks okay so make sure you stay tuned oh you're so welcome uh Hamima <laughs> all right guys thanks again for tonight and let's uh, bump it out uh Paul any last words what would you like to announce I was gonna say when you said uh for those of you who want to save money on Yi Sung kits or for those people who can't get hold of Yi Sung kits make your own yeah, and yeah, play around with the ingredients. You don't have to stick hard and fast to what I, I've given you some pointers, right? You want some fresh ingredients. You want the fish, obviously. You want the sauce, which I think is one of the most important ingredients. And you want something crispy and colorful, okay? So um, get some food coloring, make your own and sell your own. Masna, yeah. Masna, by the way, guys, uh, look her up, Masna Foodie. She sells an incredibly... Um, compelling range of Malaysian products all over Europe, okay? So have a uh, uh, get in touch with Masna. <laughs> Thanks, Victoria. Let us know how it turns out. But yeah, guys, give it a shot. Be a little bit creative in what you put in, but make sure everything should be very finely shredded and everything should be colorful, red, green, gold, those sort of colors you want, and like you want some crispy textures in there. And the sauce should be sweet with some, uh, uh, with some sourness cut through it. And again, you know, I always tell people there are lots and lots of different ways to actually um, come to the same result with Malaysian cooking, okay? So there's not one hard and fast recipe, just lots of, you know, keep down. Tramakasi. Oh, that was very cool. Tramakasi. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, you're very welcome. Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, again, guys, make sure you stay tuned for our announcements. Sign up if you haven't already to malaysianshares.com slash join today. And we will see you on Friday. And Victoria is going to be going live with us for the first time ever. So we're very, very excited to see Victoria cook another Chinese New Year dish for us. Okay. And um, by the way, guys, like I said, Paul Gray, uh, just uh, say hello to Paul, everyone. Paul is the guy who works behind the scenes, but he actually was responsible for uh, setting up Masters of Malaysian Cuisine. He was there with me from the very start, okay? Thanks again, guys. Have a wonderful night, and let's bump out again with Tourism Bye. Malaysia. Ciao.
Ouais, <rire> <rire> 